What is up, guys? So last week, I was out of town for about two or three days. I went to York, Pennsylvania for an Eaton low voltage variable speed drive commissioning course. It was a great class, and I had planned to document this entire trip from the house to the airport, my layovers, the hotel, the class, and everything in between. Just kind of a immersion into this trip, you know, for you guys to be able to experience. It totally didn't turn out that way. I had problem after problem with the camera. Um, and then I actually deleted a whole bunch of stuff by accident and then I wasn't actually allowed to really film in the facility So all in all it was pretty much a bust I managed to salvage some of the fragments of the trip and I still think it's worth sharing it a little bit It might still be somewhat useful to some guys I did get a little kind of off-the-cuff conversation about motor starters variable speed drives and the, you know the differences between starter motor controller soft start full voltage starters, variable speed drives, that kind of thing. If it's a new subject to you, maybe you'll get kind of a little primer out of that. It's by no means an in-depth conversation, but just kind of a general idea to kind of get your brain going and think about the differences. So anyway, let's go back to about a week ago to my hotel when I first got there and just kind of had this little talk. Put the place up. Put my We're talking about drives, okay? Motor starters, whether that's you know manual starters or electronic starters, soft starts, variable speed drives. In the case of what I'm going to class for and what I will be working on oh, pretty much 100% of the time is low voltage category of starters. And according to NEMA and and you know Eaton for this class. Um, Drives are categorized differently than what we're commonly uh, accustomed to when we think high and low voltage. So actually, in the case of 1000 volts AC or less, we're dealing with low voltage drives. 99% of you know the stuff I'm gonna encounter on a daily basis is gonna be usually three phase 480. So what is a low voltage motor control? We know that a motor is a component that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. That motor is gonna need something that controls the output, you know, the, the power flowing to it in order to get its rated speed and power and to do the work it's designed to do. The component that does that broadly is called a motor controller. A contactor is a very basic uh, example of a motor controller. A, that's normally what we're going to see in a residential case and even like commercial. When you start getting into the bigger stuff where these motors are enormous and, and have very high horsepowers and current, um, the demands change. And especially with fluctuating ambient temperatures, different uh, workloads, stuff like that, we also need a way to protect from overload. When you take the simultaneous need of overload protection and motor control, that component together is known as a starter. If we backtrack a tiny bit to the motor control part, you have basically three types. You have full voltage controllers, you have reduced voltage starters, and you have variable speed drives. All three have a purpose, a function, and an application where they're the best fit. They range from the least efficient to the most efficient, the most controlled to the least controlled, depending on what you need. But don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. It's really simple if you just think of it in simple terms. A full voltage starter is going to be just like your contactor. Power source, load, what's in between it, a set of open contacts, one button or one energized low voltage coil is going to close those contacts, delivering the full rated voltage, amperage, everything to that load delivering instant full rated torque. Reduced voltage starters, almost the same as a full voltage starter, except initially it's gonna deliver a reduced voltage, hence reducing the starting torque speed and work that that motor does. This is going to be more efficient in that it's gonna reduce the starting torque, which reduces the mechanical strain, which is going to increase efficiency and lower power consumption. Finally, the Mac Daddy of all of it, the variable speed drive. Variable speed drive is the king of efficiency when it comes to motors, pumps, 
blowers, etc. You're going to essentially take that three phase power, you're gonna run it through a diode bridge, which is gonna rectify that into a DC voltage, which is then gonna go into an inverter, and that inverter is gonna use what they call IGBTs, eh, insulated gate bipolar transistors. And those are gonna uh, create that pulse width modulation, okay? It's gonna chop up that sine wave, spit out a modified DC waveform that simulates an AC sine wave. Because of this, we can change the frequency of the voltage going to that motor. When you do that, you're changing the speed of the motor. And with ultimate control of the speed, you have ultimate control of the performance based off load conditions minimal energy consumption at all times. And that little like last 40 seconds I just did right there is really the gist of all your types of drives, motor starters, etc. I'll see you guys in the morning. And uh, Full House just came on, so. Saving it for sentimental reasons. Man, I used to love Kiss. Remember the guy with the tongue? Rock and roll! <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, guys, like I said, that was it. It wasn't really that much, but still something maybe worth sharing for people who have never really had to deal with these components and wanted a little bit of easy information to consume and understand the difference. Again, like I said before, most of that footage from the rest of the trip was either deleted or just came out like crap. Speaking of crap, there is one incident I managed to catch on film. <laughs> And obviously after that, if you took nothing from this video about motor controllers, drives, and their variances, maybe you'll at least learn to never consume anything from an airport that has to be heated up to eat. First, you'll minimize your risk for a disaster slash emergency, and you'll save about $45, which is what that sandwich cost. Anyways, guys, that's really it for the trip. I'll throw a little footage of me driving back, but other than that, it was a great class. Didn't get a lot of it, so... Hope you enjoyed it though, and I'll get some other stuff coming out here soon. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you on the next one.